You know how in video games there's often some sort of power up that you can get, especially in a racing game that speeds up your vehicle or your player so that you can just shoot past those last few competitors and hopefully win the race and celebrate? Wouldn't it be awesome if there was some sort of turbo button to get you to the finish line a little bit faster and a little bit happier in real life? Well, the good news is there is a turbo button and today I'm going to teach you how you can learn to press it more often. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Welcome back to the podcast. Today is our second episode in our mini series on creating more happiness. Our first episode was, is maximizing, minimizing your happiness. And today we're talking about the turbo booster button. So already I'm sure I've intrigued your interests. I mean, you're still listening, so hopefully you're intrigued. And we're still diving into lessons learned from positive psychology. And today's episode is going to be more about perception and reaching goals. So this is a major area of study for positive psychology. And just to refresh, I have taken a course, 20 hour course on positive psychology that makes me by no means an expert. But if you're like me, you probably thought that positive psychology was just some crazy term for telling people that if they just act happy all the time, their life will be happy, which is not the case whatsoever. This is about learning how to be happier in your circumstances. And we are going to be talking, like I said, about the turbo booster button and how we can reach our goals and experience greater life satisfaction and less stress. And that all plays a huge part in how happy we are. So we're going to talk about this turbo booster button. So our brains actually react chemically to helping us succeed in reaching our goals, which is pretty cool. So to help push us through the end of the race, just like in a video game, we experience an event in the brain called the X spot. This is when we can see the success is possible. Like you see that finish line, and chemicals are actually released in our brain to help us increase our speed towards success. And the closer we believe success is, the more quickly we accelerate towards it. We don't actually have to be close to the finish line, but we just have to change our perception of where that finish line is in order to boost the release of the chemicals. So another example of this, if you're not a video gamer, um, is like in a race. A half marathon, full marathon, even 5K, whatever it is, if you're running it, there's always that point where you suddenly see the finish line and you're like, all right, I can kick it up a notch. I can just run full out to get to that finish line because I can see it. Success is so close. I know that I can do it. And that is why a lot of times races, they set up the finish line so it's just around a corner. So you literally come around a corner see the finish line and you're just like I can do it and you just take off and statistically speaking there's more heart attacks that happen just at that point than any other time in a race because people come around the corner and they see that finish line and they have that flood (laughs) of adrenaline and you just full-on go out and that's when people can have some issues so if you've ever seen the end of a race and you've seen people who have gone a full marathon. They've run over 40 kilometers and then they somehow dig down and find that last burst of energy to take them to the finish line. That is the turbo booster. And even though that is a physical example, that same thing can happen when you're doing something that is not a physical task, something that's a mental goal. You still can have that same flood of hormones to help you boost you, turbo boost you to the finish line. So we can also increase our chances of reaching a goal. If we can perceive that the target as large and our competition as small. So if you were going to take up archery, say for instance, and the beginner's target is huge, you're probably going to feel more like you're going to succeed versus if the very first target is like under six inches in diameter. If the, if the target is six feet wide, you're going to feel a whole lot better about your chances 
of hitting that target versus if it's tiny. So the bigger the target is, the more likely you're going to feel that you can succeed. And if you feel like your competition is small, and I don't mean that they are small and they're not up to your standards, but if you're competing for something against three other people versus 3,000, you're going to feel a whole lot more like you have a good chance of succeeding than if you were against the 3,000. And when your brain perceives that the chances of success are 70% or greater, our brains actually release more energy, engagement, and focus to accomplish that goal. So when we make our goals attainable and create small steps along the way towards our big scary goal, we create a perception that we will easily succeed. And whether that success is a small goal or a big one, your brain reacts the same, which is the really nice thing. So as you start to get closer to those smaller goals, your brain accelerates because it's receiving that success It's so close, you can taste it. And this doesn't have to be always in a professional capacity. You can absolutely use this in your personal life and you can turn it on its head a little bit. And let's talk a little bit about what's called meaning markers or guideposts. And this is a concept that Sean Anker talks about in Before Happiness, which is a great book on positive psychology if you'd like to learn a little bit more. Um, The importance of creating meaning markers or guideposts along the path of our maps of life, our mental maps. It helps us to reach goals and experience greater life satisfaction and a reduction in stress. So what the heck is a meaning marker? So when you think about the path to success, you know how we often think about it? For some reason, even though we know better, we often think about it as a straight line from where you are to success. When reality tells us that it's never a straight line, there's always hills and valleys. And if you're in one of those valleys, if you can look towards a hill, even though it might not be your ultimate goal, but it's still higher than where you are now, you can still feel that turbo boost effect. So if you schedule in things that bring you happiness as those meaning markers, those guideposts along the way, it's going to help you feel that success, help you feel that turbo boost more often in your life. And... I can think of some great examples. So think about the day before you go on vacation when you're at work. Think about how much you get done in that day because you got that turbo boost on because you were so close to vacation. You just need to get through it. Think about when you're looking forward to seeing someone. You are going to a concert or a movie back in the days when we did things like that that you're really looking forward to. You can just plow through your work really quickly because you know when you finish that, you're going to be able to celebrate. You're going to get to do something that you're really looking forward to. And that might be a different take on a goal, but it's still a turbo boost. So think about that. Think about that. If you're able to feel that turbo boost the day before you go on vacation, the day before a long weekend, the day before a fun event, what would happen in your life if you scheduled more of those things? Maybe it's not realistic for you to schedule a vacation every month or a long weekend, but it is realistic for you to schedule something that you're excited about, that you want to get through your work, you want to get through whatever your work, whether it's professional, personal, whatever it is, we all are doing work, whether you're being paid for it or you're not, it's work. If you can get through it so that you can get to the fun thing, and then you feel that success, get that turbo boost to get you through it so that you can enjoy that fun thing. Think about how much more fun you would have if you experienced that turbo boost more often, you got more done, but you had more time for fun. Wouldn't that be great? Really though, wouldn't that be amazing to have more fun while still getting the same amount of stuff due because you're experiencing that turbo boost? Now, obviously, it is not realistic for you to be operating in turbo boost all the time. That's when you end up in burnout. That's when you turn into me. (laughs) Uh, No, really, though, you don't want to be doing that all of the time. But if you are scheduling more times for happiness in your life, then you're going to be able to experience that turbo boost naturally and in a healthy way in order to get to those happy moments. And that just really goes to show that bringing those goals, those micro goals down doesn't even have to have anything to do with your ultimate goal. If your number one goal is to be a New York Times bestselling author, it may not seem like 
having a spa date or a pedicure date with your best friend is going to get you closer to that. But it will because before your date, you're going to have that little turbo boost because you need to get these things done before you can go. And then you get to go relax. You get to hang out with your bestie or your sister or whomever it is or by yourself, like whatever, whatever you need. (laughs) That's what you do. But that is going to get you closer to it because you're getting that rest and relaxation. You are getting that shot of happiness, but you're also getting the work done. So I'm going to make this a shorter episode because I'm giving you homework. Oh my gosh, you're getting homework, but it's not going to take long and promise me that you're going to do it. Do you promise? Tell me that you promise. Say, Susie, I promise. Okay, good. I swear this is not going to take a long time. What we're going to do is we're going to first help identify your personal meaning markers, your guideposts, and then we're going to use those guideposts to plan the next couple months. So we're going to start by making a happiness graph and we're going to do one based on the last few months. So you can do it over the last month, the last three months, the year so far. And I mean, this year has been a bit of a, (laughs) it's been a bit of a, uh, it hasn't been the best year, (laughs) but hopefully you all have some things that have happened this year that were real highlights. Maybe you have to go back through your Instagram or through your calendar day book, whatever, but I want you to make a really simple graph. So you're going to make a graph that has two axes. So you're going to get out a piece of paper and you're going to make a, a vertical line that says happiness. And you're going to make a horizontal line at the bottom and that axis is going to be time. So you can list out along the time lines. If you want to do the whole year, start with January, February, March, June, July, yeah. Obviously, I just skipped over a bunch of months there, but up until now. And then happiness, obviously, times when you are happier, the graph is going to be higher. Times when you are less happy, it's going to be low. So I want you to take some time, a couple minutes, and write down some of the highlights of the year so far. And I want you to plot them on the graph. So if the highlight of your year was maybe going to PEI with your family for a week in August, that is going to be the highest dot on your chart. Maybe you went to the spa and that was a really great day, but it wasn't quite as good as the PEI day. So it's going to be a dot, but it's going to be a little bit lower um, and so on and so forth. And then if you want, if you want to chart some of the lower times, you can do that. But if that's going to be triggering for you, just stick with the happy. That's totally cool. Just stick with the happy if you want to. And then you're just going to draw a line connecting each dot. And if you're looking at the show notes or on my blog post, I'll have an example below that you can take a look at if you're not quite getting what I'm saying here. And then I want you to look at those peaks, those those high points of the year so far, or whatever your timeline is, and see what is it about that that made it a highlight for you? Was it because it was self-care that you were taking care of yourself? You don't normally do that. Was it time spent with family? Was it a trip? What was it? Those are going to be some of your guideposts. And then I want you to plot out the rest of this year. So if you're listening to this on release day, this is a great time to do it because we are like at the end of October. Tomorrow is Halloween. November starts on Sunday. And we can plot out the last two months of the year. And this doesn't have to be super challenging. What we want to do is make sure that between now and January 1st, 2021, you have at least four or five things mapped out for future happiness. So from those previous points, hopefully you have determined where your happiness what contributes to your happiness. So you can plot more of those in. And you know, these really don't have to be big, huge things. Maybe having a day with you and just one of your kids and you go out and you do some fun stuff, that might be one of those days. Maybe it's again, going for a pedicure or massage or taking a day away. I don't know, whatever it could be. Maybe you just want to have a whole day where you're by yourself and you get to read a book and you take a vacation day and you don't tell anybody about it. Well, obviously you have to tell them at work, but you don't tell any of your friends or family and just take a you day. Maybe that's going to be a really big contributor to your overall happiness, something that you can look forward to. How awesome would it be if on Monday you said to your boss, I know I have a couple extra vacation days. I would like to take 
November the, let's choose a day, 24th. That's a Tuesday. I'm going to take November the 24th off as a vacation day. And they say, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess. I don't know what they're going to say. I don't have a boss. <laughs> <laughs> but just take a random day if that's something that you can do. I know a lot of people end the year with vacation days that they never used. People, use your vacation days. Use them. If you have some extra ones right now and they are not scheduled out for the end of the year, schedule them. Put them on the map. Even if it's just one-off days here and there. Oh my goodness, you're going to be so excited when that day comes. You're going to be like, think of all the things I'm going to be able to do. Find what those things are going to be for you, whether it's a whole day off or getting a haircut, massage, just having your favorite meal for supper, maybe ordering in takeout. I don't know. You need to plot some things to look forward to. Just just think about times when you have things on your calendar that you're looking forward to. And a lot of times in the past, for people I'm friends with and myself, it's been trips that they're looking forward to. And that's kind of been taken away from us for the present time. But that doesn't mean that you can't be happy. That doesn't mean you can't experience the same level of happiness. You're just going to have to find one of those other things that contributes to your happiness to tap into. It's never beneficial to only have one or two things that you know of that make you happy. We need to diversify. Like you would diversify your portfolio, you need to diversify your happiness portfolio. So that might take a little bit more reflection. It might mean that one of your happiness things is redecorating a room in your house, which is going to be some work. It's not going to be relaxing in the sense of what we'd normally think of, but you're already thinking about how happy you're going to be when it's done. That can be a happiness contributor. You need to find those things for you. You need to plot them. You really need to do this homework. If you haven't already stopped this, or done this as I was talking, get out a piece of paper, make that axis happiness on the vertical time on the horizontal, plot out 2020 so far, the highs and the lows if you feel comfortable. Again, if that's going to make you a little bit sad or depressed, then just do the happies. And then analyze those things that have made you the most happy in 2020 and figure out how you can get more of that in these last two months. That is your challenge. I would love, love, love for you to share with me one thing that really contributes to your happiness that maybe you didn't realize until you stopped into this exercise. Send me a message, um, info at suzyfevens.ca. You can send me a message on Facebook at facebook.com slash confessions of a fitness instructor or tag or message me on Instagram or Twitter, I almost called it Facebook again, and my tag there or my handle is at Suzy Confesses. I would really love to hear what those things are for you, whether it's spending time with family, friends, by yourself, just whatever. And I want you to be as specific as possible for yourself. You don't have to be specific if you're sharing with me, but I'd love it if you were. Um, that is it for today's episode. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Now go press that turbo boost button and... Get yourself another high point on that happiness chart for this year. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope it's filled with happiness and a little turbo boosting. And I will talk to you next time.